Hey everybody, just want to jump right in and show you how I did this geochart kind of bubble concept in Excel. I've seen lots of people cover this before. It's not new information necessarily, but I want to give some kind of fundamentals behind it so you can do it yourself a little more effectively. It's a fun tool, especially for folks who don't have access to the maps feature in Excel. I know some of you under the insert tab don't see this maps option. This is going to be really useful for you as well. So what we're doing is we're using a bubble chart. The basic premise is that there is an image of a map back here, and on top of it, we've layered a bubble chart with coordinates specified for each of our bubbles that are each of our locations. Let me just walk you through how you set this up yourself and how you edit it. So our table looks like this. We've got our countries, we've got our values, and then we've got an X and Y coordinate. What we've done is inserted a bubble chart. Now, when you first insert a bubble chart, obviously it's not gonna look like this one. So let me just walk you through how we do some of that. So if you highlight your data and drop it in, everything's gonna look wrong, that's okay. You gotta go to the select data tab. And essentially you're just gonna go through here and you're just gonna make sure your X values, Y values, and your actual value itself, whatever you're trying to plot on the chart are all in these correct sections, X, Y, and size. Size is whatever your value is that you're putting. And that's gonna make your chart look a little better. You're gonna take out any extra labels, and there's a couple important things we need to do. One, click into your X and Y axis labels. You're gonna right click and you're gonna see a format option down here, format grid lines or format axis. We want format axis. Now in this menu over here under axis options, we just wanna make sure our minimum is set at zero and our maximum is set at 100. And then we wanna click into our other axis and do the same thing. We want zero and we want maximum at 100. It's important that you keep this at zero to 100 because we wanna have it normalized so it's easy to set our coordinates later. You'll see what I mean in a sec. We then dropped out the fill and dropped out the border of the chart, dragged it up and resized it on top of an image of a world map. Now you can use any image you want for your world map. I happen to use an Excel geo chart for it. This is the chart itself over here. This is just a standard geo chart. I just copied this. And then when I pasted it, I used paste as picture option you see here. And that gave me the image in the background, but you could use any map. I just wanted to do this because I liked that the states were, or excuse me, that the countries were highlighted, but you don't need to use a map that's highlighted. The, the trouble with using it this way, actually, I've added a little work for myself is now anytime I update this, I'm gonna have to swap out this geo chart and update the image. I'm gonna have to copy paste it again each time I add new data to it. For my use case is fine, but for yours might be a pain. And so you might just wanna use a standard world map. When you plot your bubble chart over, you'll see zero to 100 on the top and bottom, and we can figure out the coordinates for where we want each of our bubbles. So if we started with United States, I look at my X coordinate, I go over to the right until the middle of the United States, right about here, and that's my X value, up along the Y axis and look for about the middle here, and that ended up giving us a coordinate of 2659, puts it right in the middle. I then went through each other country, I went through France, Argentina, etc., and added those in doing the same thing. And now I did one extra step here as well, which is just in my bubbles, I chose between area of bubbles and width of bubbles. In this case, I think width of bubbles is more effective for communicating what I wanna communicate. You see more variance in when you use width of bubbles. And then I scaled the bubbles as well. In this case, I used 100, but you might find you need to make your bubbles smaller or bigger, and this just scales them down to a particular percent. 50% is gonna scale them down to half of the size. Now, I just used this tool here as a way of figuring out my coordinates. I left the grid line labels in there so we could do all that, but ultimately this is all going on another chart. So what I did is I just copied this bubble chart and I pasted it on top of another map. But because I did that exercise, and I'm using the same map with the same layout, meaning the same size and everything. When I drop it in, everything's gonna still be in the exact right spot on the bubble chart. All the fancy styling stuff, I think is probably worth you going and checking out on your own as just a fun exercise. But when we look at this, I've done some outlines, I've done dashed outlines, I've added some glow effects under the glow effect option. We've used gradients. As well, uh, I even clicked into my grid lines in this bubble chart and gave the grid lines just a little bit of a glow effect as well, just for fun. It's about 95% transparent, so it's not a big glow. Uh, and the only other big thing here is that I added a uh, rectangle in the background and that rectangle just has a gradient fill from the center out. Let me just pull that forward so you can see it a little better. It's just this here. 
if you're wondering how to do this kind of uh, glow effect, it is a gradient fill. The gradient is linear, it's at 90, and on one side it's fully transparent, on the other side it's 100% transparent, and in the center it's about 50-ish percent transparent blue, and that just creates that kind of radiating glow effect. And that's everything you need to know. If I want to update this, this bubble chart is powered by this same table. So as I update my bubble chart, the bubbles are gonna update, no problem. If I needed to actually change which countries were highlighted in here, that's a little tiny bit more work, but it's not too bad because I actually have the geo chart over here, the one used for this. So I could just copy it and paste it as a picture like I showed earlier. Or if I wanted to save myself some time and not have to ever think about the geo chart, what I could do is go in here, click into the geo chart itself, change my minimum and maximum maximum value to the same color that matches our background color and then use the, this image instead and then I would never have to update it. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just let the bubbles do the highlighting for me. But that's the basics of what we did here. Pretty much all the effects we included. Go through this and deconstruct it yourself though. Save a fresh copy of the file separately and take another copy and just pull it all apart. Look at how each element is styled. Break out different parts, try removing things, adding things, changing the locations, and you'll start to figure it out as you go. Play with the labeling and all the other features. I think that's one of the best ways to learn this kind of stuff is really just totally tearing the file to pieces <laughs> and keeping a fresh copy you can always go back to. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye for now, folks. See ya.